Welcome to this YouTube channel. In this video we are going to talk about top 10 facts about Nazir al-Din Tuzi. So before starting this video like this video, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. Nazir al-Din Tuzi, also known as Muhammad ibn Hassan Tuzi, was a Persian polymath, architect, philosopher, physician, scientist, and theologian. Nazir al-Din Tuzi was a well-known author who wrote on topics such as mathematics, engineering, literature, and mysticism. Tuzi has made many technological breakthroughs. Tuzi made very precise tables of planetary motion, a revised planetary model, and critiques of Ptolemaic astronomy in the field of astronomy. In addition, he excelled in logic, mathematics, especially trigonometry, biology, and chemistry. Nazir al-Din Tuzi, too, left a lasting legacy. Tuzi is regarded as one of the greatest scientists of medieval Persia, as he is generally credited with inventing trigonometry as a separate mathematical discipline. Tuzi was considered the best of the later Persian, scholars by African scholar Ibn Khaldun, 1332-1406. He may also have inspired Copernican heliocentrism, according to some evidence. Here are 10 interesting things about him. Number 10. Nazir al-Din Tuzi was born in the year 1201, in the city of Tus in medieval Khorasan, northeast Iran, and he started his studies at a young age. He learned the Quran, Hadith, Jafari law, logic, philosophy, mathematics, medicine, and astronomy in Hamadan and Tus, he grew up in a Shah family and lost his father when he was young. Fulfilling his father's wish, the young Muhammad took learning and scholarship very seriously, traveling far and wide to attend lectures by renowned scholars and gain knowledge, an activity that his Islamic faith strongly supported. He moved to Nishapur at a young age to study philosophy with Farid al-Din Damad and mathematics with Muhammad Hasib. He also met Atta of Nishapur, a legendary Sufi master who was later assassinated by the Mongols, and he attended Gutbi al-Din al-Misri's lectures. Number 9. He goes on to say that obeying religious law is much simpler than obeying its moral interpretation. In his book Ahaz U Anjam, he describes that the sacred accounts of history, that we experience within the confines of space, and time reflect events that are not constrained by such constraints. They are only articulated this way in order for humans to understand them. Kamal al-Din Yunus, died on 1242 AD, a student of Sharaf al-Din Tuzi, taught Tuzi mathematics and astronomy in Mosul. Later, he corresponded with Sada al-Din al-Kunawi, Ibn Arabi's son-in-law, and it seems that mysticism, as practiced by Sufi masters at the time, did not appeal to him. When the time was right, he wrote his own theological Sufism textbook, or Saf al-Ashraf, or The Attributes of the Illustrious, in the form of a small booklet. Number 8. Tuzi earned a reputation as a brilliant scholar during his time in Nishapur. Tuzi's prose writing represents one of the largest collections by a single Persian author, Tuzi covered both religious and non-religious secular issues, the ancient sciences. The definitive Arabic versions of Euclid, Archimedes, Ptolemy, Autolycus, and Theodosius of Bithynia's works are among his works. Tuzi persuaded Helagu Khan to create an observatory, so that precise astronomical tables could be built for better astrological predictions. The Rasad Khana Observatory was established in Azerbaijan, south of the Aras River and west of Marika, the Ilkhanate Empire's capital, beginning in 1259. Number 7. Tuzi created very precise tables of planetary motions based on observations made in this for the time most advanced observatory, as depicted in his book Zi Ilkhani, Ilkhanic Tables. Astronomical tables are included in this book for determining the positions of the planets and the names of the stars. His planetary system model is thought to be the most advanced of his day, and it was widely used before the heliocentric model was developed by Nicolaus Copernicus. Many consider him to be one of the most eminent astronomers of his day, alongside Ptolemy and Copernicus. Shams al-Din Bakari, his famous pupil, was the teacher of Byzantine scholar Gregory Chenades, who had trained astronomer Anwell Bryennios in Constantinople around 1300. He developed the Tuzi couple, a geometrical technique that produces linear motion from the number of two circular motions, for his planetary models. For several planets, he used this method to replace Ptolemy's troublesome quant, but he was unable to find a solution for Mercury, which was later solved by Ibn al-Shatir and Ali Kishji. The Tuzi pair was later included in Nicolaus Copernicus' heliocentric Copernican model and Ibn al-Geocentric Shatir's model. He also led to the construction and use of certain astronomical instruments, such as the astrolabe, by measuring the annual precession of the equinoxes. 
Number 6. Tuzi was the first to write a trigonometry book that was not related to astronomy. In his treatise on the quadrilateral, Tuzi elaborated on spherical trigonometry, which is distinct from astronomy. Tuzi's work were instrumental in establishing trigonometry, as a separate branch of pure mathematics from astronomy, with which it had long been associated. In spherical trigonometry, he was the first to list the six distinct cases of a right triangle. This followed earlier work by Greek mathematicians like Menelaus of Alexandria, who wrote Spherica, a book on spherical trigonometry, and great mathematicians, like Abu Wafa Buzjani and Jayani. The famous law of signs for plane triangles appears in his On the Sector figure. Number 5. Due to uncanny similarities between his work and the unsighted work of these great scholars, including Nazir al-Din Tuzi, Ibn al-Shatir, Mu'yad al-Din al-Urdi, and Gutbi al-Din Shirazi, some scholars claim Nikolaus Copernicus was inspired by Middle Eastern astronomers. The similarities between the Tuzi couple and Copernicus' geometric method of extracting the aquant from mathematical astronomy are the source of the plagiarism in question. Not only do both approaches fit geometrically, but they also use the same exact lettering scheme for each vertex, a detail that seems too preternatural to be coincidental. Furthermore, the fact that many other elements of his model mimic those of other Middle Eastern scholars supports the hypothesis that Copernicus' work was not exclusively his own. Number 4. There is no proof that any of Nazir al-Din Tuzi's work reached Copernicus, although there is evidence that the mathematics and theories did. Jewish scholars and tourists will travel from the Middle East to Europe, bringing scientific theories from the Middle East to share with the Christian counterparts. Although this isn't proof that Copernicus had access to Tuzi's work, Tuzi's it does demonstrate that it was a possibility. Abner of Burgos was a Jewish scholar who wrote a book, containing an incomplete version of the Tuzi couple, that he had learned second-hand and could have been discovered by Copernicus. It's worth noting that his version lacked proofs of the geometry, so Copernicus would have had to complete both the proof and the process if he had obtained this book. Furthermore, some scholars claim that it may have been transmitted to Muslim Spain from the Iranian school in Marika, which is home to Nazir al-Din Tuzi's observatory. Tuzi and other Middle Eastern cosmological theories could spread throughout Europe from Spain. The spread of Iranian astronomy from Marika Observatory to Europe may have been aided by Gregory Choniades' Greek translations. There is evidence of Copernicus' method of obtaining the Tuzi pair, as well as suspicious parallel, not only in math but also in visual data. Number 3. Despite this circumstantial evidence, there is no definitive proof that Copernicus plagiarized Nazir al-Din Tuzi's work, Tuzi's or that if he did, it was done on purpose. The Tuzi couple is not a specific concept, and since the aquant was a difficult requirement for maintaining circular motion, it is probable that more than one astronomer tried to build on it. To that end, some scholars claim that it would not be difficult for an astronomer to derive the Tuzi couple using Euclid's own work, and that Copernicus most likely did so rather than stealing. Since Copernicus shared his frustration with Ptolemaic astronomy and the use of the aquant before publishing his geometrical mechanism, some scholars argue that it was not unfounded for Copernicus to rederive the Tuzi couple without seeing it, because he had a strong motive to do so. Number 2. Furthermore, some scholars who believe Copernicus plagiarized argue that by never claiming it is his own, he immediately condemns himself. Others argue that, unlike other scientists, mathematicians do not usually assert their work, so claiming a theorem for oneself is the exception rather than the rule. As a result, considering the evidence against him, there is motive and some clarification as to why and how Copernicus did not plagiarize Ptolemy's use of observational evidence to prove that the Earth was at rest was criticized by Tuzi, who said that such proofs were not conclusive. Although it doesn't mean that he was a supporter of mobility of the Earth, as he and his 16th century commentator Berjandi maintained that the Earth's immobility could be demonstrated only by physical principles found in natural philosophy. Tuzi's critiques of Ptolemy were similar to the claims used by Copernicus to justify the Earth's rotation in 1543. Number 1. In his Tadkira, Tuzi writes about the true nature of the Milky Way. The Milky Way, or galaxy, is made up of a large number of tiny, tightly clustered stars that appear to be cloudy patches due to their density and small size. As a result, it was compared to milk in color. Three centuries later, in 1610, Galileo Galilei used a telescope to research the Milky Way and found that it is only made up of a large number of faint stars, proving that it is made up of several stars. What do you think about this video?
Let us know down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.